welcome the host of Nashville Now, Ralph Emery. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much, and good evening, my friends. Conway and Loretta and Randy. Mm, mm, mm. In the words, in the words of String Bean, who used to star at the Opry and star on Hee Haw, Lord, I feel so unnecessary. <laughs> Tonight is one of those super nights when the word superstar or superstars just might be an understatement. Because two of our guests have been topping the charts for about 20 years, and uh, they used to be known as the Diamond Duet. And they, I think, won the Country Music Association's Duo of the Year Award about four times. And the other young man who is with us tonight, I want to read a couple of things about him. He went out to California recently to the Academy of Country Music Awards, and he was nominated for four, and he won four. I'll go on. He was named Male Vocalist of the Year, which he said surprised him. Single Record of the Year on the other hand, Song of the Year on the other hand, and Album of the Year. Yesterday was his birthday, and his new album, his new album shipped yesterday, and they shipped over a half million copies the first day. He is hot. Would you welcome Randy Travis? From Marshville, North Carolina. Randy Travis. Randy, first of all, I want to congratulate you on all your success. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been a great year. And or last year was a great year, and this year is beginning the same way. You, the real, you realize <laughs> you are the current Cinderella of country music. And, of course, Cinderella might have been a little prettier, but uh, certainly not... In <laughs> no! <laughs> but certainly not any more successful. By the way, where's my steak? Well, I, I'll go get one for you. <laughs> Randy, I didn't bring one tonight. You, Randy used to cook yeah. and sing at the Nashville Palace. For several years, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know if you remember, we were talking the other day with some people here, but do you remember the first time that I met you? No. <laughs> I did your morning show, and this, I was like uh, probably 17 years old at the time. And uh, I remember going in that morning course early in the morning, and you came in, and I remember when you came up to speak to me, but you didn't say hello. You came in and you said, you any good? <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, that's quite an introduction. And what did of course, you... like I said, I was 17 years old, and I just said, well, some good. And uh, <laughs> didn't really know what to say. It scared me. What did I tell you? I remember that day you, you paid me a great compliment and somebody, one of the ladies there at the show said you normally didn't do that, but you said you really enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I think I probably told you, always tell them, you're doggone right, I'm good. <laughs> Did you, are you still traveling in the bread truck or have we... It still goes everywhere with huh? us. Yeah, we, uh, well, we got to where we were able to get a bus uh, just a few months back and so we're traveling with a bus and a bread truck now. And, uh, <laughs> We carry our concessions and, you know, our hats and T-shirts and things like that in the bread truck, and then uh, me and the guys in the band travel in the bus. Hey, is this a real bread truck? Are you putting Yeah, it, it actually was. Uh, and Ronnie Reno, who we bought it from, had converted it into a truck to, you know, carry musicians with. Had five bunks in it, and uh, it worked real well. Uh, the guys in the band didn't like it too much, but it worked for a while. But you now have a bus. Finally got a bus, yeah. Randy, you, uh, I, was, I was going to point out that just across from the Opryland Hotel where you used to sing and cook, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose that's, that's where you uh, first started singing in Nashville. Yeah, that was the first job I had in Nashville. And uh, like I said, I worked there for about three and a half years. Were you, were you some a, of these musicians here. Were you a cook who became a singer or a singer who became a cook? <laughs> well, I was a singer who became a cook and then became a singer and, uh, and got away from cooking, I guess. But that's how you were earning your keep over there, I suppose. Mm -hmm, for a while, yeah. You know, f I started working in the kitchen, of course, and then I started singing. And there for a while, I would go in in the evening and clean up the place and then cook for a while and then sing for a while that night. 
When are you going to go back and just buy the place? <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen. I could. The way you're going, you'll have to do something with all that money. That'd be a good problem uh, to have. I want to congratulate you. First of all, happy birthday. Well, thank you. Young... Thank you. And as I pointed out in my introduction, according to your manager, your new album shipped yesterday uh, over a half million units first day out. That's right. Yeah, boy, that's... That's fantastic. That was a nice thing to find out. It really was. You know, when they write, when they write the history of this business a hundred years from now, one of the most prominent names, after we're all dead and gone, they'll still be talking about this lady. One of the greatest names in country music. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Loretta Lynn. Hello, beautiful. Thanks for meeting me. It's been a while. Loretta, how are you? I'm great. It's been a while since I've seen you. I know. I've spent the winter in Hawaii and been back out about three weeks, and we've just been working. We just got home, and I had a meeting, and I was a little late getting over here because I did have a meeting uh, with my booker, and um, we, but we made it. Let me ask you about an old Loretta Lynn story. About what? I'm going to ask you about an old story. They used to, they, NBC did a television show at one time, I think called Music Country. And they came down to Hurricane Mills, the story goes, to, to, to film you or videotape you, and you were painting the porch. And the story goes that before you would do the show, you gave them all a paintbrush and had, had them help you finish it. Well, why not? Huh? <laughs> why not? Everybody ought to work. Are you still doing all the Crisco commercials? I sure am. What? Uh, it'll do you proud every time. Uh -huh. <laughs> do, you, do you like to cook? Do you... I love to cook, uh, and I'm doing a cookbook, a story cookbook. But I'm a country cook, and this gourmet stuff now I don't know nothing about. But when it comes to country, I can cook it. Well, what do you like to cook? Oh, I love to cook. I like to fry chicken. I like pork chops. I like beans. I like... Uh, you know, cornbread biscuits. We never had a loaf of bread in our house before I started singing. We always had biscuits and cornbread. Did you ever make something called corn light bread? No. Okay, they, that's... I've had sawmill gravy. Uh, sawmill gravy? You used to call them cathead biscuits? <laughs> that's what Dew calls them. Uh, well, how is old Dew? I haven't seen Dew him is still in Hawaii, Raph. What's he doing over He's, there? Is he we're building... surfing? <laughs> that's great. We're building a little beach house. Is he building and, it himself? Uh, no, he's got some others helping him. I but see. he ain't leaving till the last nails drove, and I know that. Are you still running your dude ranch down here at Hurricane We Mills? just started, we just took it back this year. Uh, he had it leased out for a few years. And, um... It's a place where people can bring their camper. Now, it's not called a dude ranch. It's family camping grounds, and, um, they will be treated right. Me and my family is running it, and it, it will be done right. Are you working on the road very much? This year, Conway Twitty and I, he come to Hawaii, and we talked about um, some work, because I was go wasn't going to work very much this year, about 30, year, 30 days. And uh, we talked and um, got together about doing another album and getting things going, and doing more work this year so i'm working 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 i ain't home at no time hardly let me ask you just when i come home i'm going to sing down at the dude ranch and meet the people now tonight i mean came from the ground oh. <laughs> tonight tonight you're going to sing with conway on this uh -huh. show. how long how long since you did that well him and i've been together now uh the three weeks oh so you've, you've already been back out on the road with yeah conway. this is funny too uh we hadn't sung in seven years together Hardly, you know, so we got, we were singing songs that uh, I didn't know, I forgot. So night before, the night before last, he sung, I sung his part. 
And he just says, keep trucking. Keep trucking. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. And I just kept singing. So and what did, else could I do? What did he do? Just step back and let you have it? He just, that, yeah, he did. <laughs> Tonight, tonight I'm surrounded with old friends. You know, when we went out to Las Vegas, we were having a hard time getting an opening night act because we opened in Vegas the same night they had the Academy of Country Music Awards in Hollywood, and I guess practically every entertainer was out there. We asked this man if he would help us open our debut, or open our shows in Vegas. He said, sure, I'll be happy to be there and help you out. And he did, and he did a good job. He's back tonight. Would you welcome Conway Twitty? Conway, welcome back. <laughs> you are witnessing on the couch what is about to explode at uh, Fanfare this year. Conway, you might tell us about that, the big show at Fanfare. Oh, you're talking about the country explosion? Yes. That's right. Uh, this year, Loretta's going to do it with us, and so... So is Mr. Randy Travis. It's the it's an annual event. Some of them know about it. <clears throat> it it uh, takes place uh, the Sunday before Fan Fest starts on Monday every year at the uh, Coliseum downtown. The uh, Nashville Municipal Auditorium. Right, the Nashville Mun Municipal Auditorium. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, I've gotten calls saying I want to come to the Randy to see Randy. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> so, Randy, I wanted you to know that, honey. A lot of people just coming to see you, not me at all. That's right. Gone away with that's that. Right. We hope we get about 20,000 calls like that, oh, Randy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, think, I don't think we're going to have no problems. Randy, I think she's in love with you. <laughs> I told him he was sitting there by my girl. He didn't, he didn't seem to didn't seem to phase him, man. I don't think he's going to back off from you, <laughs> Conway. <laughs> I'll tell you what. He has a, 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 what do you call it, a mutual admiration society between, uh, between Loretta and I. He's a pure country singer, and uh, Loretta Lynn and I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, fans love it, too. You can put the signs down. <laughs> I'm going to talk about this. Now, they see what they... Conway and I have several things he wanted to mention, and they're holding up reminders. You want to talk about cruising with Conway Twitty? Yeah, it's not just Conway Twitty, it's, it's Randy Travis, too. Well, it's, uh, since we're on the subject uh, of Randy Travis. Leaving me out that, of that. Uh, no, I asked, asked Loretta if she'd like to go on this cruise with us. Yeah, but I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, do you want to go? And I said, yeah. Found out he was going. <laughs> Found out I was going to take her down to the Bahamas. She said, wait a minute, I think I'm going to be in Hawaii when y'all do that. It's in right. December, see? Yeah, it's, it's a cruising with Conway Twitty and Randy Travis, and I think it's, it's December the 4th through the 7th. Is that right? Randy and I are, uh, are taking yes. a bunch of our fans on, a, on the USS Emerald Seas. And they can go, down right? Down into the Bahamas. Fan, if they want to go, they can call this 800 number. We have an 800 number that they can call. That's right. 1-800-251-2141. Right. And uh, I suppose if... They can't remember the number. I don't know why they couldn't, but they could just write to you. Yeah, if, if everything else fails, they'll write to Conway Twitty, Twitty City. And we'll, we'll take care of it. Right, Randy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you going to sing on this cruise? Will they get to see you? Not only yeah, be with you, yeah, but get we to see are. you sing? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Ralph. Randy's going to do uh, a couple of shows one night, and I'll do a couple of shows one night. On the couch, Conway and Loretta. I'm sure a lot of people are excited that the Diamond Duet is back together. And they're going to sing together after a while on this show. Conway, what was the first record? Our first duet record? Yes. A song called After the Fire is Gone in, 19, yes. in 1970. Our first, um, okay. first, first album pop came out and single came out. It was a big hit record. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. sure How many was. number ones did you have together? Hmm. Loretta and I, you know, only recorded one single a year. As, as opposed to three that most artists do. I like every one of them. So, out of all those years, we, might, we probably had six, maybe seven number ones, and the rest were number twos and threes. I think yeah. there was different, you know, there's three, was three different 
magazines. They went number one and one or the other. Everybody called, if you don't go one in Billboard, you know, you don't make it. But that ain't the way I look at it. If you go number one in Cash Box, you still got a number well, one record. All right. right. Or, Loretta. Or, or, right? Loretta. Or, or, that's right. Or anything. You remember the first time you ever met Conway Twitty? Yeah. Who brought you together, Owen Bradley? Uh, when they had the old uh, Columbia Studio, uh, oh, well, it was called uh, the Bradley Studio, mm -hmm. and he sold it to Columbia. Mm -hmm. And it's now called like Columbia Studio. Butt, but yeah, you... and Conway was in our recording, and he, he had always heard me talk about, I just started singing, but he had heard me rave about Conway Twitty. And, oh, Conway uh, had heard you rave about him? No, Owen. Owen, oh, Owen had so heard you. So Owen just sneaked out, kind of. Of course, I was always running all over town, you know, trying to get something done. Uh, I aggravated everybody to death till I made it. So um, <laughs> I did. I was on the pub I was on the steps of every publishing company at eight o'clock every morning, and they they'd have to move me over to open the door. <laughs> so, they got part of it and finally done something for me. But anyway. Uh, uh, Conway was recording. I didn't know it. And I went in to see Owen, just to say hello. And uh, he said, would you like to meet Conway Twitty? And I thought, he looked down and looked, what a joke, you know? <laughs> and here come what Conway started coming walking out. I almost passed out. She had a, she had a poster, uh, a Conway Twitty poster in, uh, in her home, back even before she got I hate to say this. No paper on the wall, ago. but Conway Twitty poster. Yes, yeah, <laughs> You hate to say that? Uh, well, that's a long time ago. I mean, that's, you know, that's going on back there. Well, no, I don't hate to say that. I mean, obviously she up. was a big yeah. fan of yours. She didn't like rock music, but she liked Conway Twitty. She liked it's only make-believe, that song. Mm -hmm. let, me, uh, let me go back to something we talked about earlier as we bring on this young man. He's going to sing the title song from the album. I mentioned to you earlier that Randy Travis's new album, which came out yesterday, shipped over a half million albums the first day. That's a, that's a hunk of wax. And uh, the, he's going to sing the title song from the album, which is called Always and, and uh, Forever. Here again is Randy Travis. Incidentally, if you ever visit Twitty City and go to, uh, I don't know what you call that anymore, Conway. That, where I lead them through, I talk and they watch. They look at all that oh, stuff. Oh, that's, that's a sh showcase. Okay. There is a special section reserved for the Diamond Duet. And, that's right. And it's a tribute to the, what you're about to see at this moment. By the way, when do you, when do you go back on the road with Miss Loretta? Three weeks ago. This is coming weekend. <laughs> Friday, oh, yeah. you mean when again? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I think we're in uh, Tulsa Friday Oh, I'm night. sorry. In Wichita, Kansas, Saturday night. In uh, Columbia, <laughs> Missouri. Uh, I'm having a hard time reading that from way over here, too, yeah, Conway. Uh, May, the, May the 15th, is it? In Bristol, Tennessee. And we're also going to be at George Jones Country Music Park down in Texas. I, I can't remember the exact date, but it's just two, a couple of weeks off. And he's, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. He's a super duper dandy dude. He is. Yeah. All right, now what are you, you? You're about to sing one of the last records released before you broke up, if I remember correctly. We never did break up. Yeah, we just kind of laid off. Okay. Yeah, before I left one label and went to another one, and uh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's a, a song called "Loving What Your Loving Does to Me." Now, when, when do you go back in the studio and record again? That, we're, has that been settled? We, no, not, not totally, not yet, but almost, just as close. We had a long meeting with uh, Jimmy Bowen last night, and uh, everything that I can think of has been settled, with the exception of one thing, and, and, and uh, we're working on that. Okay. So That's it shouldn't be me. long. <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to it. All right, here they are, ladies and All gentlemen, right, the right. Diamond Duet, Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Yeah. That's Miss Conway, Mr. Conway, and Miss Loretta. One of their great hits. Randy, Randy, what did you do on your birthday? You know, it was real nice. Of course, we had a nice party. Seems like we, uh, it lasted all day long, and 
had a lot of friends over, you know, for one thing. And my manager, uh, I don't know if you know him or not or knew he lived there, but uh, Minnesota Fats lives at, uh, at the Hermitage here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I've, I love to play pool, used to play a lot. And so she lined it up for me to go and, and shoot a game of pool with Minnesota last night. Mm. And uh, it was did, interesting. Did you feed him? Uh, no. Is this what you're talking <laughs> about, Randy? Right here? Is this what you're talking about? <laughs> you yeah. didn't know I had this, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah, this, yeah. We're gonna get, this is a surprise to Randy. He didn't know we had this. That's Randy with Minnesota Fats. Boy, I tell no, you back what. Back to my question. Did you beat him? No. No, didn't come close. <laughs> Did he run the table on you? Uh, one time he almost run the table. Yeah, I shot three games with him. And I, I did. I won the first game, but I think he gave it to me. <laughs> and then he started talking about gambling, and I didn't say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of stayed away from that. He's a character, okay. though, boy. He, he talks as much as Loretta Lynn, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. They'd what make about a Rap good pair. Huh? <laughs> They'd make a good pair. All right, wait, this is... Randy! <laughs> this is show and tell time. Show them your guitar. The, the guitar, as I understand it, has an interesting history from a Nashville Now standpoint. Yeah, that's right. It, it came from a guy, Sarge, and uh, he's from Phoenix, Arizona. And we got some people from, from there. But uh, he's a member of our fan club. And I met him at Fanfare last year for the first time. And so he sent this guitar here to Nashville now for me. He gave it to me, and which is there? a J200 Gibson, and it's a 1949 or 50 model. And it was nice. He sent a letter with it, and he wrote in the letter one of the things he said, uh, I wanted to give this guitar to you. just wanted you to have it and said, maybe you can play it on TV one of these days. And said, I'll sit at home and say, well, there she is. Oh, that's a nice story. That was. So, Thank you, Sarge. And there it is. He, but it's a great guitar. He picked you out from all the uh, people he could have sent it to. He saw you on this show and sent it to you? Yeah, I think he saw us on here the first time. That's right. And, uh, of course, he came to Fanfare, like I said, last year. And I got to meet him and talk to him for the first time. But just for a few minutes, we were so busy. And then he sent this to me. Well, it's, it is a great compliment, a real nice thing to do. Well, Sarge, wherever you are, it's being uh, played in front of a lot of people these days. You, you... <laughs> hey, Loretta, when you were recording with Conway before, you made a record one time, and you used to have little comments that Owen Bradley would leave on the record. Like, one time you were singing, you said, this is the silliest song I have ever tried to sing. Do you remember that? Yeah. Was it Spiders and Snakes? Spiders and Snakes. And, uh, well, we never, we never rehearsed it hardly, and uh, I couldn't figure out what in the devil we were doing with, with that song. Conway said, we're going to do this song, you know, it's great. And I thought, gee, this is silly, but it's a great song now. I learned to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we took it on the first take, too, because they were afraid that something would lose, we'd lose something if... Uh, we took another take or something. You did. Uh, you had one picking wild mountain berries, which uh -huh. which was very good. Hit the road, Jack. Yeah. You stole from Ray Charles. We don't steal. Well, I mean, you. <laughs> Who picked out the song? You're the reason our kids are ugly. Well, little girl wrote for me. Wrote that. Lola Jean Dillon. That's a cute song. There used to be all kinds of rumors about romance with Conway Twitty, too. How'd you answer those rumors? Oh, I embarrassed Conway a lot, because used to he's more bashful than he is now. And we were setting up in, uh, oh, this is years ago, uh, setting and signing autographs, and it was real cold, and the, our bus is stalled in Memphis, uh, Indianapolis. We couldn't get any farther because it snowed. So they flew us in. Uh, to Wisconsin someplace. And this guy just kept saying, now, come on, y'all. Tell me, are you married? Let, uh, come on. And it went on for 10 minutes. I just looked down at him and I said, no, nah, we're just living together. And Conway just flipped his <laughs> pin up there and left. <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Speaking of Conway, we're going to go back. You know, Conway was a giant in the world of rock and roll whose 
ambition was to become a country music star, which he accomplished. This song... Conway, I understand you're going down to the Grand Cayman Islands next week. That's right. What's Cayman. that all about? All right, we have a, a uh, say we, myself, and many partners have a, a new hotel that uh, is having its grand opening down there this coming week. And it's called the Treasure Island Resort. And uh, I think there are three islands in the Cayman Islands, but uh, the Grand Cayman is the island that the hotel is on. Uh, Ah, let's see, who all is going to be there? Uh, Earl Thomas Conley is going to be there, the Gatlins, uh, Deborah Allen, Dave and Sugar, Helen Cornelius, Pinkard, and Bowden. They're all going to be there for the grand opening as well as a very special show to the Lions, the local Lions Club right there on the, on the island. They put on a show every year and raise money for uh, underprivileged children and various different uh, things. And I did the show last year. And the, the, I guess the most... Outstanding, uh, the outstanding thing you can find on these islands are the people. They, uh, the Cayman people love country music and they love Ralph Emery, I'll tell you that. They love the Nashville Network and uh, it's a, uh, oh, and I'm supposed to, uh, I'm supposed to invite you right here on this show to give you and your wife a personal invitation to come down to the uh, all expenses paid trip to the Cayman Islands uh, this coming week if you want to come. And we've already talked to uh, your boss and uh, he said that if you wanted to go, said that he, then he can go. So, hmm. how, oh, oh, how nice. Did, he also tell, uh, did you also work out how long I can stay? <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> no, we didn't work that out. We, just, we, we fixed it so you can go. You can work what, the other end out. What, what night are you <laughs> talking about? Uh, let's see. We're going down on, on Mondays. That the, show, the shows are on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we're going to go on down on Monday and get a little sun. And uh, some of the people are going to do a little scuba. It's the world's greatest scuba diving. All right, what night is the night of the uh, special show for the Lions Club? Okay, it's two nights. There's so many acts on it. It's Wednesday and Thursday, both nights. And, uh, and you, you've, uh, your boss has said you can go. Well, I see. You really put me on You'll the spot have... right here. <laughs> you? <laughs> you put me on the spot enough. But he did. He said, yeah. And right. I may do it again guy. before this show is over, Conway. <laughs> you keep on. Well, I, I, let me first of all thank you for the invitation. I all don't right. know yet what I, I don't know whether I can accept that or not, but I do appreciate all right. being remembered. And I, I wish you well. You, you own a hotel down there? Huh? You own a hotel? Yeah, a little bitty part of it, yeah. Oh. Gosh, that goes along with all your ball. I guess you'll take your, your ball clubs now and take them to spring training in the Grand <laughs> Cayman Islands. That's right. Take them down the to the Conway is the leading. Don't take Loretta, but she didn't, she didn't want to go. What are you going to do? My hotel. <laughs> huh? She may go down by her own hotel. Mm -hmm. I, uh, tonight, tonight, what? I have not have you somewhere there. I am not <laughs> introduced you yet. Will you hush? To. Well, I'll give you, I'll tell you what, when you get through singing this. I ain't coming back. Yes, you are. <laughs> when, you get th tried this. when you get through singing this song, then I want you to come back and, and talk to me. Here again is Miss Loretta Lynn. All right, Loretta, you have the floor. You just go ahead and say anything you want to. I ain't to. saying nothing. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to talk about tonight? What's on your mind? Right now? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. You said there was somebody in the audience you wanted to recognize yeah, earlier. Yeah, Jeannie Pruitt's in the office. Who? I'm in the office. Jeannie Pruitt. I didn't know she's she was She's in the here. audience, yeah. Jeannie Pruitt here? She sure is. She may be backstage somewhere. Yeah, she's somewhere around here. They're all here. pointing in that direction. Oh, yeah, she is. She's back here somewhere. But I wanted everybody to know she's here. Well, she's been, there she is, right there. Hello, Jeannie Pruitt. Thank you. Hi, Jeannie. Pardon me? Back there cooking, that's hey, right. Hey, Loretta, when you do those Crisco commercials, we see you on the screen for about 30 seconds. How long does that take, that 30-second spot? I think probably commercials is really harder than doing movies because it, everything has to be just right. The food, the people, 
the clothes, the hair, everything has to be, um, and the table, everything has to be perfect. And if it all's not perfect, they stop and they start. Stop and they start, you know, and it goes on and on. It usually takes uh, two or three days. George over there, he usually works with us on... You mean uh, old plugger? Yes. One of our stage hands, It's George hard, Lyon. isn't it, George? Yeah, yeah George uh, looks like it's really tough. He, but every Chris time he, worth every it, time he comes back know? from one of your commercials, he's about 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> Also, Loretta mentioned to me a moment ago that she wanted to tell me about who was singing at the, at, can't use the word Dew Ranch. Oh, uh, at my camping grounds, uh, one of my little twins does three shows a day in the little western town. Um, the other twin, uh, she has a band and she's kind of rockabilly and she, she's on the road half the time. Sissy, my other daughter, the blonde, uh, she's got 24 dates this month, so that ain't too bad. And Ernest Dre, my son, he uh, fronts my show right over there. What, he what was it? If anybody to... would like to look at him. Now, you're talking about the twins, Peggy and Patsy. Peggy and Patsy. Uh, what did we used to call Ernest Dre? Ah. Oh. Uh, Coupe de Ville. Coupe de Ville. Oh, I remember that's that. it. The Cadillac yes. of country music. That's the right. Cadillac of country music. I still say that's what it is. Huh? I still say that's it. By the way, I haven't hawked all the merchandise I've got here. Have you seen the new Conway Twitty album? That's good. This is it. <laughs> Julia is in that album, another number one record for you, Conway. Yes, sir. What's going to be the next release out of this? Well, we're, we're discussing that right now. I'm not sure. Uh, it's going to be between uh, a song called Snake Boots. There's a song there called Snake Boots. It's a dandy. Hmm. And then there's another one uh, that I can't remember the title to right now. You uh, know what? I want to I wanna know you. I want to... Uh, i got to be careful with this title. I want to hold you before we make love or something like that. It's a good one. No, you got it wrong. You want to try again? <laughs> you, want, you want to try that again? No, I want to let it alone. Huh? <laughs> it's I want to know you before we make love. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and it was written by two ladies, Becky Hobbs and Candy Parton. Is that one of the famous Parton sisters? I'm not sure. Is that one of Dolly's sisters? I'm not sure. Okay. That's a great song, I'm sure of that. Okay. You don't go boom, boom, boom in that song, do you? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. You've heard of the Conway Twitty doll. What? I have a Conway Twitty doll. Oh, you have a Conway Twitty doll? Yep. What? Oh, how, stands there and goes, ah. <laughs> 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 hey, wait a minute. Uh, but, uh, the one thing we haven't done here, Randy Travis, where are you appearing? Your dates? Uh, we're with Conway on a lot of dates. Oh, I've got, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're with Conway on a lot of dates. Uh, Conway and Loretta? Yeah, all those dates were with Conway and Loretta. And, you know, that's been a nice thing over the past year, which uh, I've been singing since I was eight years old. And it's been nice to get to work with people like Conway, and uh, which I've never worked with Loretta, but I look forward to that. And people like George Jones. and You know, all these people who I've been listening to for several years and singing a lot of their songs, too. So that's been nice over the past year. You sing with your heroes, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it is. What we're going to do, we're going to come back with Louisiana Woman and Mississippi Man. We'll be right back. You know, Randy, Randy turned 28 yesterday, and he said to Conway a while ago, he said, uh, boy, you know my memory's just not what it used to be. <laughs> You're working with George Jones. Yeah, we These start... first dates that we put up on the screen are with George Jones? Maybe that's right. Huh? <laughs> Maybe that's right. I you, think you're right. Then you move over to work with Conway and Loretta. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I tell you what, I, there's so many things to keep up with, and of course my manager and road manager and all that, they keep up with all the dates, and uh, I have a hard hurt. time remembering where we Sarge Overmeyer was the fellow we talked mm -hmm. about earlier. He gave us the guitar. I yeah. gave you the guitar. All right, we've done everything. Let's go for Louisiana Woman, Mississippi Man. Here's Conway and Loretta. <laughs> The Diamond Duet, Conway and Loretta. Also, uh, tonight I want to thank the Coal Miners, Loretta's band, the Twitty Birds, Conway's band, and Nashville. 
Randy Travis's band for helping us out. Did you applaud them? Tomorrow night, Hank Thompson, Jim Glazer, the family band, Vicki Ravon will be our guest. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Loretta Lynn. Conway Twitty. And Randy Travis, right here. What a show. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your life. Mr. Whitehurst, let's go home. Good night, everybody.